eyes upon our problems and mountains that we face, but that's the wrong way to look at life. Let's take our eyes and our thoughts off our current problems and put them on the one who can bring us through our problems and the one who can heal us of our infirmities. This morning as a family, fellow believers, let's put our eyes on Christ as we sing this next, next song.
that church, Sunday morning church, is for believers. It's for us who follow Christ to come and worship and learn from the Word together. But I do believe there's a few times every year that we can use church to reach our friends and family for Christ. And so next Sunday is going to be our Sunday that we want to reach out to our lost friends and family. And next Sunday is going to be about Christmas light. The Christmas light of Jesus Christ. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Hey, I've been memorizing the book of John so it's right there. <laughs> but so what we're going to do is we're going to give you some invitation cards. And I want you to take some of these and you can pass them around. Take two or three and pass them around. And what I want you to do is and as the Holy Spirit leads you during this week and invite someone, your neighbor, maybe someone you meet somewhere. And that's all I'm asking you to do. No pressure. I'm not telling you to go out and do something hard. I'm just, as the Holy Spirit leads you, obey Him and just invite someone to church. Go by and pick them up. Go by and pick them up and say, hey, let's go to dinner after church. Let's go to lunch after church. And they'll, they'll come with you. So next Sunday, Christmas light, Christmas outreach to people who may need to know about Christ. Also, as we do that, you know, you think I'm going to do a Christmas play now, but I'm not. This is for my message today. God's design for the family. God has designed the family to be led by the parents. We should shepherd our families. And this is a shepherd's crook. Now this is a good tool. I wish I would have had this when my children were younger. You keep this with you, you're at the store. Oh, come back here. And now you're not going anywhere. They're in the checkout line, messing with candy, just gently... Nudge him with the bottom of the cane. Come on, let's go. But no, God has designed the family for parents to shepherd their, their children. Before we go any further, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we could come and worship you and we could learn from you. I pray that you would give us a vision of what it means to shepherd the family. To lead our families in the way... Christ. Our families are under attack, Lord. You see it, you know it. And it would be to our advantage to lead, to shepherd our families. And I pray that through the day's message you would be glorified and your people would learn and they would grow in their commitment to you and to leading their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So for a sermon illustration, I'm a, this is going to be fun. It's going to be fun this week. All right, uh, let's go ahead and pass out the candy kings. I need more practice. More practice. Oh, yeah. I took some martial arts cl classes when I was younger. I was going to hit Jason right in the eye. I better, someone come take this for me. I'm just kidding. Alright, so we're going to get a candy cane and I thought this week when I was pre preparing my message over the last two weeks, I need something, a sermon illustration and candy canes came to mind. So the candy cane is your reminder to shepherd your family during this holiday season. Do you know that it's been my opinion that to to change your life, you don't need to know a bunch of rules and regulations. That doesn't change your life. What you need is a vision and a passion and a desire. Now that is what gets the ball rolling. That's what changes your life. And if you're going to change your life, you're going to change your family and become more effective in your parenting, you're going to have to 
start with a strong desire to shepherd and lead your family. Now, when I'm talking about shepherding, we're going to have to switch gears in our brain for a little bit. Because we're in Texas. And what do we like in Texas? We like cows. And we're ranchers. And we're into, we're into leather. Guns. And gun, no, not guns. That's not fitting with... <laughs> I'm gonna get, you're going to get some of this. <laughs> he is. We like guns. But I got to stick to the shepherding. It's not fitting, man. It's not fitting my example. We're into leather and steak. Not into wool and mutton here in Texas. I hate lamb. I had some leg of lamb with mint jelly. And it was the most disgusting thing I'd ever eaten. I, we were at a nice restaurant in California, you know. And I spit it out right there in front of everyone. It was disgusting. So we got to change our mind from Texas ranchers and steak. Travel 8,000 miles all the way over to Israel. And you're like, how do you know it's 8,000 miles? I googled it. That's how. <laughs> it's from S San Antonio to Israel. It's 7,950 miles. So about 8,000 miles. And you're going to have to change your mindset from 2013, go back in your mind 2,000 years ago and think like a shepherd as much as we can and come along. Now, in the Bible, God often identifies himself as a shepherd. He often identifies himself, the son Jesus Christ as what? The good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And you and I are sheep. Christ Jesus died for us to protect us so that we may have eternal life. Jesus Christ said, the sheep what? They know me. They listen to my voice when I call them. So the Bible is full of the shepherd image. Psalms, 20, Psalms 23. Where's my Bible? Turn with me in your Bible to Psalm 23. I preached a sermon at a funeral last week. And this, um, this verse, this chapter came up. This is a very famous chapter in the Bible, often read at funerals. Psalm 23, 1. Psalm is in the middle of your Bible. If you just open your Bible up to the middle, you'll probably hit Psalm. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my what, people? The Lord is my shepherd. Is he, the sh is he your shepherd? Amen. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams or still waters. There's a better translation. He renews my strength. He guides me along the paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. It's not my purpose to do an exposition of this text this morning, but just to give you the image of God as the good shepherd. Jesus Christ is our shepherd. Your rod and your staff, your staff protect and comfort me. Okay? So God is our good shepherd. Jesus Christ is our good shepherd. He lays down his life for the family. So this image is full of the Bible. And we need to embrace the shepherd image. As you think of Jesus Christ, you need to see him as your shepherd, your protector, your comforter. He leads you to green pastures and still waters. Now we need to adopt this 
image as parents to shepherd, to protect, to lead our children. So, 2,000 years ago, the shepherd, the dad, would have a flock of sheep. Now, shepherds lived out in the country. There's not much farmland in Israel, so we're not going to use farmland for grazing sheep. So the farmers would kick the sheep out and the shepherds out to the farness of the wilderness. And in the wilderness in Israel, it's pretty, pretty messed up. We call it a wilderness. They say Alaska is the last wilderness, the last frontier. Well, the wilderness in Israel is nothing like that. It's a desert. It's a tough terrain for the toughest people. And so the shepherd, the over-shepherd, the dad, maybe he would have sons. Jesse had 12 sons. His youngest son was David. He was the shepherd. Now, as I was studying this this week, often little girls are shepherd, shepherdess, age 12 to 16, right in that marriage age. So if you're that if you're that age, girls, you could be a shepherdess out in the wilderness. These girls had to be tough, man. Protect the little lambs from predators. And it also changes my vision of Easter morning. When the shepherds were watching their fields at night. It wasn't grown men. It was teenage boys and teenage girls who would come to worship the king. So the shepherd would lead their flocks out into the wilderness in Israel. Now, when I think of the grasslands of, and the plains of Idaho, Montana, where they have a lot of sheep, New Zealand, that's not the green pastures of the Bible. It is sparse. It is rocky. And when the Say this is east and this is west. A, a cool wind would come in off the Mediterranean into the wilderness. And it would hit up against a hill. And it was very humid there. So between the rocks, moisture would gather. And in between the rocks, grass would sprout up. Every day, every day there would be grass for the sheep to eat. So the picture is God doesn't just plump us down in a meadow and we don't have to do anything for the rest of our lives. No, it's our daily bread. Every day, every hour that you're going through something, you're to go to the good shepherd and he will give you grass to eat, taking it to the next patch of land or to the next hill where there's some grass, tufts of grass. Now the shepherd protects the sheep. At night, the shepherd would lay down in between a gate or lay in the midst of the sheep to protect them. So God protects us at all times. The shepherds would go out and lead the sheep. You see, sheep need to be led. They're pretty stupid. But it also reminds me of a quote from uh, um, the scientist theory of relativ relativity what's that guy's name Einstein, Einstein. what the heck <laughs> I must have been huffing too much glue when I was a teenager because <laughs> I can't even remember Einstein's name I don't know Junior high kids, don't even... It's, it's nothing, don't worry about that. <laughs> Einstein said there's... Uh, people are stupid. You know? Because we do the same thing over and over again. Expecting different results. And that's what sheep do. So during the day, the shepherd would have to be right in front of the sheep leading them. Because if they, if, if they take one minute off 
from leading for shepherding. They'll get into thickets and they have this thick wool and they'll get caught up in the branches and they'll get stuck. And then you've got to go and cut them out. Or these idiot sheep, they'll be up on these high wadis, these high valleys. They're not even watching where they're going. They have their heads down. They'll just walk off a cliff and kill themselves. The shepherd has to be on watch 24-7. Okay? The shepherd. So you have the picture with me of what a shepherd does. On watch all the time. Protects, leads, provides food and still waters to the, the sheep. Now I'll give you one more thing that I read this week. So these valleys, it hardly ever rains there, but when it does rain, up in the mountains, there's no room for the water to go anywhere. So an inch or two of rain up in the mountains... It all goes downhill. And you can be in the valley, and if you're in the valley, at a moment's notice, these roaring rapids will come in and kill you and the sheep. So when he says, I take you by still waters, it's puddles of water, not these rushing waters that would come into the valley and wash you away. The shepherd knows where to lead the sheep. And as parents, we better lead our children, or the waters of this world will come in and kill them. You have a very important job. And it's my, it is my prayer that today you'll do nothing more than increase in your desire to lead and to shepherd your family. Okay? Next time we'll talk about how we can do that. So shepherding your family. First point, please. All right. Proverbs 22.6. Turn with me in your Bibles. It's Proverbs 22.6. Psalms, Proverbs. If you have your finger where you were, go to the right. Proverbs 22.6. I think this is a Bible verse that every parent should memorize. So try to memorize this verse this week. Let it guide you. Let the Word of God guide you and help you to think biblically and correctly. It says, direct your children into the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. Okay? Some versions, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he was older, he will not depart from it. So to direct or to train your child... Train your children, direct your children, shepherd your children into the right path. And when they're older, they will not leave it. Now, I'm going to tell you why you need to shepherd your family today. Why you need to take this with such seriousness. Okay, you know, I'm a, I'm a fun guy. I like to have fun and joke around. But we need to be serious about this when it comes to shepherding our children. So the first word there is direct, to train up. Now this is a Hebrew word. It's a word of religious duty, not economic preparation. Your first job, your first duty as a parent is to direct your children in the ways of God. It's not to prepare them for college or to be a doctor or have any other talents. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying the number one priority from the Word of God is to direct your children to train them in spiritual matters. Jesus said, why does it matter if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul and die and go to hell? What good is that? I think of Kurt Cobain from Nirvana. He was so popular on top of the world. The late 80s, early 90s, man, that hairband stuff was gone. In came grunge. Y'all remember those days? I liked it too. I was like, man, anything with these hairbands. I hated those poison, all those. They look like girls. I'm like, be a man, dude. Cut your hair and get that freaking makeup off your face. Take that spandex off. So 
So when these guys came up in blue jeans and flannel shirts, I'm like, hey, it was a pretty good tune too. Teen Spirit, y'all remember all that, right? I'm not pr promoting this at all. <laughs> <laughs> I promote 97.7. That's my station. But they came on the scene and it was powerful. And they were like, oh yeah, you know, Nirvana. They came on the scene. But this dude had all the money in the world. He went from doing heroin and living in hotel rooms to a giant mansion and all the money, all the power in the world. And then a few days later, blew his head off with a shotgun a few years later. See? Doesn't matter if you gain the whole world. But if you lose your soul, nothing else matters. So I want you to get that in your head. If your children do nothing else, if they're a waitress down at Abel's Diner for the rest of their lives, who, I mean, I'm not, I'm not putting that down. I'm just saying, if they did that or if they were a ditch digger, who gives? And you know what? If they know Jesus and follow him, they'll be full of joy and they'll get to heaven and they'll live like a prince in God's family for the rest of their lives. So take serious your walk with Jesus. Take serious shepherding your children. Because it's God's command to us. We, he, we've been put in charge to direct our children. So, your children need direction. They need to be shepherd. Why? Because they're inexperienced. Now listen to me, teenagers, sixth graders through high school. I know you think you know it all. And some moms are hitting their children to pay attention. When I was 18, you couldn't tell me anything. I thought I knew everything. Now that I'm in my 30s, I... I mean, now that I'm in my 40s, I know I don't know anything. I really don't know anything. I've been studying God's Word for almost 30 years, and I still don't know the Word as much as I should or I could. And I study all the time. That just tells me my weakness and my this constant hunger to grow in God's Word. Now, kids, you're inexperienced. Turn with, to Psalms, Psalm 10, 7 through 9. Flip over back. Psalm 10, 7 through 9. This is why you need to shepherd your children. They're inexperienced. They're talking to, um, the psalmist, is, this song is talking about the wicked. Verse 4, the, I'm going to start with verse 4. The wicked are too proud to seek God. They seem to think that God is dead. It's like the 60s all over. But he's on his throne. Verse 5. Yet they succeed in everything they do. They, not see, they do not see your punishment awaiting them. They sneer at all their enemies. Verse 6. They think nothing bad will ever happen to us. We will be free of trouble forever. You know, we can just keep on partying. We can keep on doing bad stuff and living after the world. And There's not going to be a payday. I'll never get caught. Verse 7. Their mouths are full of cursing, lies, and threats. Trouble and evil are on their lips or on the tips of their tongues. Here it is. Verse 8. They lurk in ambush in the villages, waiting to murder innocent people. They're always searching for helpless victims. These people are wolves. Like lions crouched and hiding. They wait to pounce on the, on the helpless. Like hunters, they capture the helpless and drag them away in nets. John 10. Jesus said that Satan is a roaring lion seeking about... No, that's not. That's Peter. 10.10. Uh, 10, um, Okay. No, no, no. Hold on. 
The, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life to the full. Thank you. First Peter 5, 8. Satan is a roaring lion marching about seeking whom he may destroy. Who are they going after in this? The helpless, the innocent, the weak. Children, our children, our teenagers are being eaten up by the world. It's as if our whole nation and parts of our country, I have no idea what we're thinking about. It's as if the whole world wants us to be perverts all of a sudden. And it's accepted. And they want our children to be perverts. They want our children to be indoctrinated with the things of this world. That's why you need to shepherd and lead your family. Because your children are inexperienced. They will be eaten up by this world. Satan will trick them and lead them off a valley and to a wadi and kill them. Teenagers in this room, you need to be careful. You need to listen to your parents, don't listen to your teachers. You need to listen to your parents, don't listen to your friends. You need to listen to the Word of God. And if your friends, the people you hang with, go against that, and they won't turn their back and follow Jesus, they bring you down to find yourself new friends. Shepherd and lead your children. Because if you don't, someone else will. A lion, a thief, will come in and lead your children. Okay? That's why you need to shepherd and lead your children. They're inexperienced. Next. They're your children. Proverbs 22, 6a. Direct what? <laughs> your that's ownership. Direct your children. Direct your child. You know it's not the job of this church to shepherd and disciple your children fully. It's not the job of Pastor Brian. He can't do it. I can't do it. It's your job to train your children. It's our job, mine and Pastor Brian's job and the church's job, to come along beside you. To do our part, yes, we play a part in that. But it's your main responsibility. We come and we equip you. We come and we reinforce what the Word of God says in their life. We reinforce what the parents are teaching at home. They're your children and you must shepherd them. Now I want you to do that today. Before you leave here, I want full commitment from you to shepherd your children. That's all I'm looking for today is a, a, a new commitment, a fresh desire to shepherd your family today. Now you may say, I'm not a great leader. I've never led anything. I, maybe you have a lack of confidence in this area. But don't let that stop you. They're your children. Don't you think if God gave you your children, you're, are you not the best person in the world to shepherd them? No matter how rich you are, no matter, no matter how great a leader you are, God gave you those children for you to lead. You're the right person for the job. Don't let Satan's lies, don't let this negative talk in your brain, I can't lead my family, I can't shepherd my family. I don't have the skills. That's a lie from Satan. You do have the natural abilities. You do have the skills because God gave you those children. And if he didn't give you those children then you wouldn't be shepherding. But if he did give you those children, sure shepherd them. That's very confusing but I hope you followed that. God gave you your children. You have the right gifts, the right talents, the right abilities to lead what? Your children. So own it. They're inexperienced and they need your help. And if you don't shepherd them, who will? Someone else will. Now, they don't know where to go. Proverbs 22, 6b. Train up a child, direct a child what? 
onto the right paths. These shepherds in Israel, they have these paths into the side of these rocky mountains. And the shepherd would walk out in front of the sheep a, a little bit. Not too far, like I said, because they'll get off. They got to they gotta be able to hear the sheep's voice. And as the, the shepherd got to the sheep have to hear the shepherd's voice. And if he's close enough, they'll follow behind them. That's leading. And you have to lead and be out in front of your children. Because what? They don't know where to go. If you do not teach your children, how will they learn? Our children weren't born with the ability to know truth. When you get a child from day one, it's like bringing home a computer that all it has on it is an operating system. You have to go in and program your children. You have to program them with truth. They're inexperienced. They need help. They're your children. And they don't know where to go. Lead them. Direct them to the right paths. Matthew seven thirteen through 15. When I read the word paths... In Proverbs 22, 6, Jesus reminded me of these verses. Why you need to disciple your children. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. Listen to this. The highway to hell is broad. And its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow. And the road is difficult. And only a few ever find it. You need to shepherd your children according to the word of God. Because if you don't, they will not follow the right path. They will follow the wide paths, the roads that lead to destruction and off and through the valleys and they would die and they would get caught up in the thickets. They need your help. You have a lot of experience. You have a lot of knowledge in the word. You say, well maybe I'm a new Christian. What can I teach them? I don't know. What did you learn that day? The old teaching saying is, if I'm one day ahead, then I'm still the teacher. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that before? Have a meeting, have a teaching, go study beforehand, and then you go in. I'm the expert. You guys don't know what I know. Come on. Yeah, but I just studied, so I know more than you, so I'm still the teacher. That's how it goes with children. Go get something early in the morning. Get one little morsel, one little tuft of grass from the Lord. See where it's at and then bring your children, your lambs, to eat there. But they're your children. You have to shepherd them. You have to leave them. They don't know where to go. And if they don't know where to go, they will go down the path of hell and destruction. Because there's many people who want to take them there. My middle daughter, Gracie, and my daughter, Haley and Ava, we went to the HEB one day. And I'm always, it probably gets on the nerves, but I'm always trying to teach them something. And so, I started at a young age trying to teach them, okay, where are we going into the store? Are we on the right or on the left? What's the, what's the number? Where the, where's the car? Does anyone else ever do this with your children? Teach them how to find their way back out. And so my test that day was for my middle daughter, Grace. She was about eight. And I'm like, and she wanted to push the cart. 
And so I was letting her purse the card after the checkout. And this is the most adorable, the cutest thing that I've ever seen. But it kind of broke my heart at the same time. And so she was in her little eight-year-old way with her little curly hair. She says, she looks around at me with big eyes. And she says, Dad, I don't know which way to go. And that, to me, was so cute. But it also brought home the truth. My children do not know where to go. They need me to shepherd them and to lead them. Your children need you to lead. They need you to shepherd them, to take care of them, and to lead them in the paths of righteousness. And you do that your way with your abilities that God has given you. And here's the good part. They will stay on the narrow path. Direct your children unto the right path. And when they are old, they will what? They will not depart from that. You got to start with that vision in mind. My children will follow Jesus Christ. My children will walk the narrow way. Now, don't listen to these psychologists, these idiots, who say, oh, you can't, you shouldn't teach your children which way to go. You got to let them discover it for themselves. I've heard this. Has anyone else ever heard this? Don't be teaching your, you can't teach your, you're an idiot. If you hear, they're an idiot if they say that. I'm telling you, don't listen to them. They're your children. You're there to teach them. If I was a socialist, if I was a communist, if I were anti-God and a humanist, man, that would be my philosophy. Hey guys, don't teach your children about Jesus. Don't worry about it. We'll teach them all about religion down at the schoolhouse and at the college. You don't worry about it. We got your back. See, that's a lie. The only person who would ever tell you not to lead your children is someone who wants to lead them and take them the way of the world. They don't know the truth. You know the truth of the word. So lead your children in the word and when they were old, they will not depart from it. So shepherd, shepherd, shepherd your people. Shepherd them. Break the necks of the wolves with your crook. Gently, lovingly discipline and lead your family. Shepherd them according to the word of God and the Bible. So, your goal this week, single moms, single dads, shepherd your, fam your family. Moms and dads who are married, shepherd your family. Blended families, I don't care, shepherd the ones that God has in your house. If you don't have children, shepherd someone else's children who are going the narrow path. Oh, not the narrow path. The path of righteousness. They're going off the deep end. Maybe your friends, your children have some friends like that. Maybe it's your grandchildren or a kid in your neighborhood. Shepherd their children onto the paths of righteousness if they will let you. Follow the good shepherd and then shepherd your family. Okay? That's all I got this week. Just shepherd your family. Shepherd your family. Do your best. Don't worry about it. Love them. Do your best and God will use it to help them stay on the narrow path. Okay? Take your candy cane. You can eat it now. If you haven't already started, I've already seen some people working through it. But this Christmas, you see that candy cane, reminds you to shepherd your family. All right, let's stand up and pray. After we're done praying, Pastor Brian Durr. Him and his wife are going to come up here. They're going to stand up here somewhere. And they want all the youth. 
and their, if you're a parent, even, come over here. And my pastor Brian wants to talk to you about Christmas festivities in the month of December. So parents, go over there. See what uh, pastor, pastor Brian needs help with with Christmas stuff and get that all planned. That'll be fun. Next. If you were here and you're like, man, I like what Pastor John was talking about, but I have a question. Maybe I didn't, you didn't understand something. Maybe I didn't explain something good enough. Or maybe you're wanting to know how you can have a relationship with Jesus and grow in your walk. Brian. Brian. Sorry, that's Brian. This is Sean and Miss Paula are going to be right behind this curtain. They're going to be standing over here. If you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need anything, come and see Sean and Paula, and they'll take you behind this, and there's some chairs back there. They'll sit down with you and talk with you about the Word of God, to pray with you, to answer any questions you may have. I, on the other hand, will be in the back, back there. And if you're a visitor, you're an old-timer, you need prayer, you want to talk to me, I'll be in the back. But if you're a visitor, you're a newbie, I want to talk to you in the back. That's where I'll be. Okay? And then, of course, if you could help us by taking your chair, putting it on a card over there, that would help out as well. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we've talked about a heavy subject today. It's been, it's been fun, but it's also pretty serious. And sometimes as parents, we feel inferior. We feel unconfident. But your word tells us that we can have confidence because you've given us everything we need to live godly lives in Christ Jesus within the word of God. I pray that the parents would be encouraged and strengthened to lead their families this week. If it's nothing more than sitting down at the dinner table and reading a few verses from the book of John. Or the book of Proverbs. Just getting the word of God. Modeling. Knowing and reading the word of God. If it's nothing more than sitting down on the side of their bed. Before they go to sleep at night. And praying with them. And talking with them. About the things of God. No matter what it looks like. I pray that these families would not be discouraged. They would not listen to the lies of Satan. But they would listen to the truths of the word. That you are the perfect one. The shepherd your children. They need us, Lord. They need our help and our wisdom. I pray that you would create a strong desire and a lasting desire that they would persevere and every day share the word. Share a word of wisdom from the Bible and pray with their children every day. There's no days. Lord, may there not be one day where they don't teach the children something about you and to pray and to worship them. Because if we do that, then our children would stay on the narrow path and they will know you. I pray that next week as we invite people to come to church to hear the gospel preached, that people would come next Sunday to hear the gospel. And they would go to other churches as other people in our community invite people to their churches. I pray the Holy Spirit would, would be there and people all around Church Sibylla would get saved through all the ministers, through all the Christians at the different churches including our church next week. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks.